If you want the gills, we got the skills right here at 302 Fishing. Good morning, welcome back to the channel here. If you're brand new or you've been sitting around since uh, 2020 and into the new year and you haven't already done so, smash that subscribe button, click that notification bell, that way you're informed of all of our future episodes. And of course, drop a comment below. Let's get into this. Happy belated new year. <laughs> it's been a while guys, I have not disappeared. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I've been out for a few weeks and I've been not able to produce any fish whatsoever. Of course, you got life problems and you gotta deal with that as well. So we're finally out here for the first episode of the year. Today, we are gonna target a fish that I normally don't target. We are gonna go for chain pickerel today. Uh, as of late, uh, past two weekends, I've caught no bass at all. They are still just elusive as anything. And I've been to a bunch of ponds. We've had super, super cold overnight temperatures and these fish are just not moving around as of yet. I give it about two or three more weeks and they'll start being a little bit more active and everything else like that. But we're gonna get into this episode. I'm gonna talk about a couple things as we're out here casting, trying to catch these critters. Uh, they are very toothy. Uh, they are hard fighters. And uh, you hope you get them in before they snap off your line. So let me get my base tied on. Let's cast it out there and hopefully if we get lucky, we get some fish on. Here is the uh, bait selection I picked down here for these uh, feisty fanged fish that we're gonna try to catch today, the chain pickerel. Unfortunately, the middle one, which is the little Cleo right here, I was not able to find the color that I wanted, so we're gonna single this one out first and then we'll talk about these two. Uh, I picked out a quarter ounce spoon that we're gonna use right here that we're gonna tie on the end of the line and hopefully we can get some action off of that. But I really wanted these colors right here, the fire tiger colors, because uh, these chain pickle love bright gaudy colors, especially like a uh, lime green, a chartreuse, and that bright orange, man. They just attack these baits for whatever reason. But subtracting the Cleo out right now, these are the baits I'm going to primary focus on. That's going to be my last bet if I don't get anything off of these baits. But we've got the Aglia. We picked out the number three, which is good for picking up pike and chain pickerel, which is what we're focusing on, chain pickerel, because we don't have any pike down in our area here. You have to go way up north in order to get that out of the uh, rivers that are up there. And then we've got the Rapala Husky Jerk Fire Tiger. One of these two baits, I'm sure, is going to pick up a fish here. We're going to be making a whole bunch of casts right now, and hopefully, if we're lucky, uh, we get something on here. Uh, I'm going to drop a picture right here in front of you. Uh, my buddy here uh, and his brother, they go out all the time, and they have a great channel. It's called Orange 22 Fishing. I'll drop a link down below in the comments, or not a comment section, but in the description field. That way, you can click on there, and you guys get to enjoy the episode that I'm getting ready to mention uh, after you get done watching this one right here. But this picture right in front of you, you see Matt caught a absolute slunch of a uh, chain pickerel here. Mind you, the record is seven pounds. This dude caught an absolute monster. This is like a unicorn in Delaware, because usually it's a one or two pound range that you catch these fish on. But that one right there, four pounds, two ounces, guys. That's a fish of a lifetime. I've been fishing for God knows how many years. I've never seen a chain pickerel that size. So, uh, Matthew, congratulations on catching that fish right there, man. That is, uh, I'm not Matthew, but David, congratulations for catching that fish. I keep getting those two guys mixed up all the time. But uh, we do have some fun times out there, but I just want to give him his props uh, for catching that fish, man, because uh, I'm sure he was uh, pooping his pants when he's bringing it in, saying, line don't break, line don't break, and he finally brought it in. But we're going to go ahead and get these tied on, man. Let's go ahead and try, try to figure out what we need to do to try to get some fish on here because uh, it's quite breezy out here and it's just enough to where it you feel it going through the bones guys but i'm i'm confident we're going to get some fish on so let's make it happen oh we got matt or david on there we go let's get over here as you can tell guys we're collaborating that's one of my new year's resolutions here and that's to collab with all of my delaware youtubers are out there and david does definitely have a good one it's bent the rod pretty well we're going to grab the net make it a little bit easier for him because again if it is a chain pickerel they easily snap the line but you see he's having a time and a half getting it in right now so give me a second to get in here and we'll help him out in the assist but he's got a nice little bend going on and well, let's see what he's got i think he's got a bass because it doesn't look like it's fighting like a, a pickerel. Is it, you got something on her? I don't know if you threw it and I'm snagged now or something, but... Uh, come on, man. Don't be fooling us like that. You saw I had a fish. Are you on something? I'm on something. Now. Okay. False alarm, guys. 
<laughs> I out of All right, so let's get out of here, man. <laughs> All right, let's get our let's get our lure going to water there, and uh, talk a couple minutes here, and then we'll get into talking about fishing uh, for this particular species right here. Today, at the beginning of this episode, we are going to be talking about resolutions and New Year 2021. Very, very slow start. The last time I posted was the 27th of December. It is the 16th of January. Uh, again, I do apologize for the long drought there. It did not disappear. Obviously, I'm right in front of you right now. Uh, I took a little time off. Um, I was having a tough time. I did get out a few times trying to catch a fish. Was not able to produce anything. And of course, you got to deal with some life issues that are going on. Uh, so I took care of all of that. And here we are back out here producing for the new year. The resolutions that we have for this year of 2021, I've got a couple of them right now. My first one of the year here is to beat my PB bass. Uh, I have six and a half pounds is the largest one I caught. I think it was last year that I caught. And again, six and a half pounds is pretty huge for me. I mean, I've been around for a long time and I've only caught two fish over six pounds in my whole life. So the goal this year, seven pounds. It can be done. The Oaksters caught multiple seven pounders and even an eight pounder, so they're here. There was actually an eight pounder in this body of water that we're in right now that was caught many years ago. Uh, so there, it's cruising around, hopefully still. Maybe it might be in the double digits now, I don't know. So that's one of my resolutions. The next one, I'm gonna give you my ambitious goal and then my realistic goal. And that's subscribers, guys. Right now, I'm at 2,156. The realistic goal is I'm going to go ahead and shoot for 3,000 subscribers. I have no doubt if you guys are hanging around and brand new, or uh, if you're seasoned and you haven't already done so, you're going to smash that subscribe button, click that notification bell. That way you're informed of all of our episodes. My ambitious goal is between here and the end of the year is to be at 5,000 subscribers. And that would be awesome. I would be out of my mind if that ever happened. But uh, that's another one uh, that we're gonna go for right now. And again, I've got full confidence we can get to that 3,000 uh, pretty easily as long as uh, I keep doing what I'm doing and trying to put fish up in front of your face and keeping you guys excited. My next goal here is to fish more often with Captain Frank. I actually got a couple phone calls from him. He's actually reached out to me, not me reaching out to him. He was excited with the episodes that we created uh, towards the end of the year. And uh, we are going to get out there and we're going to try to get some other different kind of fish on the end, uh, whether it be canal or ocean fishing on his boat. He's assured me uh, we're going to get out there multiple times and um, he's got everything going on. You see Captain Frank puts me on the fish and I'm just going to go with the people who know better. Uh, and, and where to catch these fish and, and make these things uh, some exciting episodes for you guys to see. So I'm excited for that. Uh, the other one is I want to collaborate with as many Delaware YouTubers that are out there. Uh, I'm sure most people have been watching uh, First State Fishing. Mike, uh, he is taking a lofty goal of uh, going out there and going across the whole United States here. He got that giant camper that he got. And uh, I'm excited for him, man. I mean, he's, he, he deserves it. I mean, he, he put the work in and uh, his channel has absolutely blown up and has opened up opportunities for him. So Mike, congratulations on you and, and your endeavors. And I wish nothing but success for you and uh, you and your girlfriend and, and camper, the dog. <laughs> but again, collaboration. I'm not here by myself, guys. You guys have seen these young gentlemen before. We've got David over here. We got Matthew over here. Orange 22 fishing. I encourage you to go ahead and click down there, subscribe to their channel. These gentlemen are fine fishermen. That's why I come out with them because, again, I like coming out with people who are fairly competent in what they're doing. They've got the same exact passion as I do, and they don't care what fish they have on the end of the line. They're happy to get a tug. That's all that matters. So if they've got that passion, I've got the passion. We put our uh, souls together here and try to make something great happen in front of you. So any fellow Delaware YouTubers that do want to collaborate with me this year, by all means, drop down there. My email address is down there. Uh, you can get a hold of me on Facebook. Direct message me. Um, I think my phone number is on there too. You can drop me a text uh, that's on my Facebook page. I think I'm pretty sure it's in there. And uh, we'll get together, guys, and we'll start doing some, uh, some collaborative efforts. Because, again, if Mike decides to travel across the United States, he is our largest Delaware presence. He is going to be gone, and we've got to try to potentially pick up the slack here to keep us relevant here in this state. 
So that's enough of me talking here. We're going to get to fishing now. Uh, those are my four resolutions I decided to come up with. I had bullet points and everything that I wrote up here and everything to make sure I got everything out there instead of me stumbling and bumbling in my conversation. Of course, it helps open a bail here while as I'm casting. But again, sorry about boring you with the conversation, but it is my first episode. I wanted to get it out there. So now on to what we're supposed to be doing, and that's fishing <laughs> instead of talking. <laughs> But you can clearly see I've thrown a dozen or more casts out already, and we're not getting anything on our lines. Uh, first cast uh, David threw out there, he had one on there, he got it halfway, and the fish just jumped right off. But uh, let me go ahead and take a walk down this way over here. I'm going to go beyond Matthew and uh, go over here by this bridge right here and see if we can get anything. Today is a we episode. This is not a me episode. Because again, the fish are few and far between right now. So if these gentlemen catch something here, I'm going to be putting it on my channel. So we've got some action going on here. But we're going to walk down here to the uh, bridge here we travel across. There's a dam right here. And down below is the spillway. You saw us at it a million times. You know, I haven't seen us on here at the top part that many times. But that's what we're going to do here. We do have some brave souls that are out there on a John boat. And uh, that wind's whipping pretty well, so I'm sure that boat's being tossed around a little bit. But I'm curious to see whether it's gonna be the inline spinner or that small little jerk bait that gets the uh, fish on. I walked over to the boys over there. Uh, they have not caught any fish uh, yet. We are formulating a game plan right now, and I think what's gonna happen here is I'm gonna throw a couple more shots out here with the Aglia. And then uh, we're going to throw that jerk bait on there and see if maybe slowing it down even further might be able to produce a bite. Stick here for about an hour. If that does not happen, no fish or anything else like that, we're literally going to go across right here. I don't know if you can see where that pavilion is right here to the left of my rod. But where that big well-formed pine tree is, that a dark green pine tree right there, there's actually an, a, kind of like an inlet inside of there. And I saw some guy catch some decent fish out of there on an episode he posted up there. So we're going to try our luck over there. Maybe you might get an errant bass, uh, which is what he was catching, uh, hitting up on one of these baits, or maybe the pickle might be in that area too. I don't know. We're just trying to spitball and try to figure out what we can do to try to get one or two fish on the end of these lines. So let's go ahead and get back to work. Next bait of choice right here is going to be the Arapala Husky Jerk. That's the HJ8 that we're using right now. Nice bright colors. The name of this, again, Fire Tiger. That's the uh, style of these baits we're using because of all the uh, bright and gaudy colors here to try to get these chain pickerel. It's possible we could get a bass on here. It's possible, possible we might get a crappie on here. They do hit all these bright colors. So let's get this out of the package. Let's tie it on and uh, see if we can get something going here. Maddie over there looked like a polar bear. He's got his hood over his head, knit cap, gloves. I'm sure he's got hand warmers and feet warmers and thermal socks. <laughs> <laughs> we got our jerk bait right here. Looks pretty cool looking. Hopefully we can get some strikes off of this. We are going to tie a loop knot. As I told you, it's fairly easy to tie. The reason why we're doing that is because we want the maximum action out of this bait. You want to go side to side, and then again, obviously when it pauses, you just want it to sit right there in, in mid-column, uh, and hopefully the fish hit that pause. But I want the action to get their attention, but if you tie a palomar knot onto the o-ring here you're not going to get that good side to side action so when you tie a loop knot um, you got a loop it's about maybe about a half an inch long or a quarter inch long and it gives it a little more freedom to move that side to side action and rolling around and everything else uh, and again to trigger these fish on uh, to this bait so you're going to get your uh, fishing line right here probably going to be hard to see because again it is six pound test but you're going to go ahead and just tie a single knot right now so we'll take the tag in this is like you're tying your shoe. And there's your knot right there. You can see the little loop that we got going on right there. And you're gonna take the tag end of the line and put that through the O-ring. If I can get it through the O-ring, because Dan's uh, vision is the worst ever. <laughs> All right, so we got it through the O-ring. You're gonna take your tag end. You can see the loop that's right there. Put the tag end through that loop. Grab the tag end again. You're just gonna pull up just a little bit. And I don't want this getting all the way down towards the bait as of yet, so I'm gonna kinda of hold this on. And then the tag end, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go around four or five times 
above that little knot that you just got uh, created there as you started off this knot tying. So we're gonna go one, two, three. My manual dexterity is horrible. And then coming around the fourth time, we'll grab that tag end again. You can see it hopefully there. And you're gonna take that tag end and that little loop that you created right there at the beginning, you're gonna put that tag line right in there, okay? And you're gonna slowly, slowly pull down on that knot and get it to where you want your loop at. And again, you don't want a huge, huge loop because again, you don't want the hooks getting caught in the loop that you're trying to create. So we're gonna grab that tag end and kind of pull and pull and pull. Bring it down just a little bit more. And then there you go. You can see the loop that's created right there on the end, see it? And that's exactly what you want right there so that the bait goes back and forth in the water like that. And we'll give it one more tie for safe measure. And boom, you're ready to rock and roll. Clip off the remaining tag end. And we'll get out there fishing with this uh, unique little bait. The water's relatively clear here. I would say it's about maybe 85%, so you should be able to see what I'm getting ready to do right here. I'm gonna drop the bait in the water and uh, kind of give you guys an idea of what I'm doing here or what I'm imparting the action on this particular bait. So we're gonna drop it right in the, uh, the water right here. I'm sure you can see it, it's bright green right there. It's on the top of water, floats. So you have to hit a jerk or two to get it underneath the water. And then you're just gonna jerk, jerk, and you're gonna let it slow rise. Two or three seconds, jerk, jerk, slow rise. See it moving up, jerk, jerk, and let it slow rise. The color's gonna kinda draw their eye into looking at that bait, and then the pause should be the trigger for the fish to go in because that bait or that lure is not moving and hopefully they swoop in there and go ahead and snag that up and take it as a morsel in their mouth. You can see here we're mobile right now. We're not gonna bore you with the second location. We were over there. We caught as many fish we caught out of the first location, which was a big fat zero. Uh, we've been casting around and casting around. We've used the jerk bait. We used inline spinner. We've used spoon. We can't get these chain pickle to come up out of here because usually they're, they're pretty active right around this time of the year. Uh, obviously the man of the day, is this guy right here uh, a couple days ago in that location we just came from he caught that giant so hopefully you guys got a gander that at the beginning of the intro right there but we're going to head down the road right here there's another place we think that there's going to be some chain pickle rim hopefully we have a little bit more luck on this one here but uh, we're crossing our fingers man the goal right now one to two fish does not matter who catches it it is a we episode as i mentioned to you not a me episode because that's how tough the bite is right now all right, I'm going to try out with the jerk bait right here first since I already got it tied on. Uh, again, as I said, it might be shallow over here, so I might have to get away from the jerk bait and get back to the inline, the aglia. But let's uh, bomb it out there and see what we can get away with. Yeah, it looks like we got decent depth going on here. Water's really, really clear. I can literally see the bait from over there. That's how super clear that water is. I'm glad I got a little thinner diameter line on here because I'm sure if we had that 10 or 12 pound on here, then fish would see it coming a mile away. Oh, there's a fish here. I just saw a fish come out there and swipe that bait right on the edge. Yep, there you go. Fish on. Fish on. Yes! We're not skunked. <laughs> I saw him again dart right out from underneath those weeds and smash the living daylights out of that jerk bait. <laughs> All right, there we go. <laughs> we got the target species on the fire tiger. <laughs> but uh, absolute slimy snot rag here. But uh, let's go ahead and uh, take a couple seconds to get that bait out of its face and we'll get a good release on. All right, let's go ahead and get our 
chain pick rod here into the water here before he dries up because again you don't want them dying on you again I want to keep that nice protective coating on that fish but get that little chuck out there and she's gone what I was noticing again you heard me mention the first time I saw the fish swoop up out from the edge of these weeds right here so I'm throwing my cast out I'm doing the jerking motion let it pause and let it rise and as I'm getting right to that edge right there the first time as soon as it sat right in front of the edge that's when you saw him come out from underneath all of this and then when I came over here same thing I saw the jerk bait come right to the edge of the weed line I did that one jerk one more time right directly there as it rose right before he hit the top of that weed line boom darted out and he smashed the crap out of it. we almost got caught up in that uh, old stalk from a uh, lily pad right there but nonetheless we got him in not skunked rocking and rolling first fish of 2021 success <laughs> yeah. now we got to get the boys on there we go david's got one on fire tiger <laughs> Oh, I got another one. Got another one, guys. All right. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. That, this is uh, David's idea to jump over to Derby Pond. Uh, that's a, a very local pond. I mean, I don't mind giving the name out because everybody and their mother goes to this pond. But uh, this fish definitely swallowed up this bait here. So give me a couple seconds to try to get that out of there. We're going to have to go ahead and get uh, his pinchers real quick. Oh, he got a bass. All right. I'm going to run over there real quick because I definitely need uh, the grippers that he has so I can open up this mouth to get this uh, jerk bait out of his face. Whoa. Ow, 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 ow. Woo. He hooked me, guys, for a split second. <laughs> oh, my God. I had a trouble stuck in my hand with a fish shaking all over the place. It hurt like hell. <laughs> But here we go, man. The fishing is lighting up. Yes. But uh, David's got a bass right there. Boom. Doubled up, baby. And we've got a little claw marker on there. So let's uh, get that uh, gripper, wherever the heck that's at. This one's slightly bigger than the other one, but uh, we're going to get the hook out of his face. Well, uh, David, go ahead and does his release. But uh, he uh, absolutely devoured that jerk bait. Look at how the hook got buried right in that mouth right there, guys. Oh, he is feisty. Required a little bit of surgery, but we finally got the uh, the hook out of this chain pickerel. But we're going to get it on its way, get it back in the water, and she's gone. Fire Tiger! Check it out. That was the bait of the day today. I put the challenge out to try to catch some chain pickerel since I wasn't catching any bass, and I succeeded. We tried with the aglia, we tried with the silver spoon and we couldn't get anything on there. But as soon as I put this jerk bait on there, jerk, jerk, and that slow, slow rise of that bait right in front of those weed lines triggered a number of those chain pickerel to hit on the end of this bait. Again, it's the Rapala Husky Jerk Fire Tiger HJ8. That was a great bait, man. I was totally surprised how those fish were triggered just on that rise and coming out from underneath of that vegetation. So I'm a happy guy. Uh, I'm not going to argue with it. It's a tug on the end of the line because we've been really struggling out here. It has been raw the whole day. I mean, our fingers are frozen to the bone. I've been out here for at least four hours. I'm going to stop talking about my fish, but I do want to give an honorable mention to Dave and Matthew. They did themselves catch fish. They unfortunately did not catch any chain prickle. Technically, Matthew did, but uh, we're going to go first with what the David was using, and we pointed out to you earlier today. That is the Aglia Fire Tiger, the quarter ounce. That's what caught that giant uh, chain pickle I showed you earlier in the episode. But he was able to land a bass off of that. And then Matthew, I thought he was absolutely insane with his gigantic spoon. Two fists of an ounce. I, I thought he was going to have a, a crappy day and just be skunk. But guess what? Came My man through. caught some bass right off of his giant stupid spoon. Yep. But hey, first collaboration of the year, guys. As I said, if you are a Delaware YouTuber and you want to collaborate with myself and as well as the boys right here, 302 Fishing right in front of you. 
click down below orange 22 fishing subscribe to these young gentlemen man they're good fishermen i love going out with these guys because every time we come out we do put fish on the end of the line and that's all that matters getting those tugs i love shooting this episode i'm so glad we caught some fish because i've been trying for two weekends through this whole new year and finally we got something to to be proud of like subscribe push that notification bell share this video up, drop a comment below hopefully you guys have a great weekend and as always fish on